Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today is another day where my project has chosen me. So, as you probably noticed from some of the other videos, I really like to ride my bike. And with riding my bike, I do like to go on the trails. The only problem is, is I don't live next to the trails. So I have to put it into my taco. The only problem is that this bed is the smallest bed known to man. I believe I've seen some trunks that are bigger than this thing. So check this out. All right, so I got my wife's bike in here. Uh, mine, I kind of broke this morning. Uh, that might be on another video. And, uh, but yeah, as you can see, it is crammed in there. Now the problem with my bike, my uh, Diamondback, is that when I put it over here, laying on its side, apparently I have air in my brake lines, so it takes a few minutes to actually get the brakes to actually engage because it has to pump it up. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a mount for our bikes. Now I could put it up here on top, and what I was thinking about doing was actually coming up over here, bringing it up over, and then putting a rack so it'll stand over here. Here's my problem with that. When I used to have my BMW, I had to rack on top. Well, problem with that is one day I forgot. And that was my front tire. So I had I had to replace the fork. I had to replace the tire. Um, I think it kind of messed up the neck a little bit, but it's still usable. So what we're going to do, instead of putting it up top, we're gonna put it on that trailer hitch. Not that one, I got another one. But I wanna have it hanging out the back. Now I did look at a couple of the really nice ones that you can buy online. You can buy at Dick's Sporting Goods, you can buy REI, you can buy wherever. The only problem is that they want way too much money for it. I'm cheap and I'm stingy and I wanna, I'd much rather put it into a lift for the taco, tires for the taco, a front bumper, a rear bumper, sliders. I got a long list. And I don't want to spend that kind of cash on a bumper mount bike rack. When we have a welder and some cutoff wheels and some scrap steel, and we can make one. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make a bike rack. Let's go. All right, so you guys have seen my problem. Now we're going to fix it. So this is everything I'm going to need. And this is what I came up with as a design for my bike rack. So I'm going to show you everything and then I'm going to build it. All right, first we're going to need a receiver hitch. This is just a basic two inch hitch. I took the ball off and this guy should work really well. It's a little heavy, but it should work for what we're, what we're going to do. Um, and basically I have a piece of 120 wall uh, DOM. Uh, what is this? A one and three quarter inch uh, piece of pipe for tubing. Basically I'm just going to hold it up here like this. And then weld that up there. I may put a gusset between here and there just to make sure because I don't want my bike to fall off. And then I'm going to take this, it's a one inch steel bar stock. Just, it's from, an, I'm not sure what project it was from, but it's from another project. But anyway, I'm going to have this sitting there uh, welded on to the edge of the pipe or the tube. And then from there, I'm gonna cut this guy up. Now this was a cross member for a network rack. Um, it's kind of a theme here. I get a lot of the network rack stuff from work. But I'm gonna cut this stuff down and put little tabs on it because I have this uh, Sweden built, uh, it's either a Thule or a Thal or Thule, whatever you wanna call it, I don't know. I'm not Swedish. So anyway, uh, they have little brackets down here and this was supposed to be made for the top of my BMW. At least that's what I bought it for. And obviously I do not have my BMW anymore. I have a taco. So I want to put it on the receiver hitch. So these are the tools you're going to need. You're going to need some gloves because this stuff is going to get really hot. Safety glasses. You're going to get a hand grinder with a, well, I'm just going to use a flap wheel. Um, I got a couple of magnets to be able to hold things together. Uh, tape measure to make sure things are centered. Oh, yeah. And my new toy. This right here is a fine tool uh, cutter. It is for steel. And it, it makes butter out of pretty much everything we put onto it. Um, we just need to make sure that it is square from the blade to this backrest. This thing is money. Oh, fantastic. Highly recommend that for anybody doing steel work. 
Um, cause actually it will take this one inch steel bar, chew through it in less than a, like maybe two seconds. It's fantastic. But anyway, oh yeah. And the other thing you're going to need, your trusty dusty welder. Also you need some protection. So I got my jacket. So let's start designing it and building it. Let's go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we need to measure how wide the bicycle is. And basically I need at least 16 inches from the base of our tow hitch to the end. And if I put my bar up here, there you go. And it is right at 12, did I say 16? Oh, I'm sorry, it's 12 inches from the end of this bar. And that will keep my handlebars from touching the back of the back of the bed. So we should be in good shape. So that is exactly 12 inches. So this is just a scrap piece that I had left over from the Jeep, which is fantastic. And like I said, this is just a scrap piece of one inch bar stock. I'm gonna find the center point of this so I can grind all the crap off so I can actually get a good weld. If you caught any of the other welding stuff that I've done, clean, 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 clean. You need to have bare metal. You cannot have paint. You cannot have anything else on there. You need to have bare steel. Now, as I'm doing this, I will be using one other product that I didn't use last time. All right, so since we're going to be welding, this is called just basically it's weld through primer. I got this at O'Reilly's. They don't have it out on the floor. At least I couldn't find it. I had to ask them and they had to bring it in from the back. Most of the professional grade stuff is in the back. You always have to ask for it. So we're going to spray everything down with weld through primer, let it dry, and then we can weld stuff to it. Uh, there's certain areas like inside this little cup and the bowl and inside of your tube uh, There is a protective coating on there, but as you can see it's starting to rust over the years So we're going to spray this down with some weld through primer So after we weld it the places that we couldn't get before is actually still be a little bit protected Because we don't want this thing to rust so Let's get at it I'm uh, gonna find the center point of this rod 11 three quarter Mm, yeah, these Milwaukee pens are pretty decent too. All right, so I'm gonna take my flap wheel. We're gonna clean off the uh, the receiver hitch. We're gonna grind this all the way off, and we want clean metal, and we also want to bevel it. If you caught my other one when I was uh, fixing up the uh, curl bar, uh, I beveled it really, really good on that one, and I wanted to bevel this one as well. Also, one thing we want to do, we just don't want to weld that up to that. So what we're gonna do is actually cut into this. So we'll be recessed in and then we're going to weld it as much as we can inside, outside, sideways, whatever we can. And we're going to spend most of our time on the one inch stock because it is the thickest and we want it to get hot and hot enough to melt. So we're going to spend at least two seconds here, one second here. So one, two, up, one, two, up, one, two, up. It's kind of like doing the waltz. Sort of. So anyway, let me get my gloves on, get my glasses on, and we're going to start grinding. make sure that it is straight on your grind so we're going to use the just so it doesn't come loose there we go. that's not bad not bad for the first time kind of hand grinding um, i'm gonna go a little bit further in just so i can give a little bit more bite and then once i actually weld around the sides i'm going to actually squeeze this together so that the i can well, probably have to hit it with a hammer but flatten this out so I'm not filling in so much of the weld right there. And that will seal it up, and then we should be in good shape. Yeah. All right, so we got them both kind of ground down. We're gonna basically set that up there like that. But first, put some primer on there, because this bar right there will start rusting. Uh, way overkill for what I'm doing, but that's what I got. What we're gonna use. Use what you got before you do anything else. All right, so we got some well through primer on that guy. But we're gonna put this over to the side. So this will be the first step right here. We're going to use these guys to uh, center it up, make sure it's straight. I got it straight on my table. I'm gonna have it straight on that. Hopefully everything will be great. All right, looks like we are square to the table because we got this little guy, this magnet here. We are square to 
the bar because I got this guy here. Now we're just going to tack it on the sides. And once it's in there, we can all the way around. Just get some expensive stuff out of the way and get it welded. All right, like I said in my other videos, uh, it is very important to be protected. So right now, a little dusty, so I'm put my jacket on. Now, the one other thing that I do have on today that I did not have on last time is my do-rag. And uh, when sparks are flying, <laughs> it gets on top of your head and it gets stuck in your hair. And when it's stuck in your hair, it hurts. So, we're not going to do that this time. Alright, got, got my jacket on. I'm going to get my gloves on. Now, ideally, you would want to use these type of gloves. These are welding gloves, uh, but they're huge, they're big, and they're bulky. Uh, if I was doing some really big, heavy stuff, then yes, I would use these. But these little little jobs, these little leather gloves are pretty good. Don't go plastic. All right, let's see what we got. All right, so once again, on the welding settings, uh, we are going to use the highest setting we got because it's only a 110 welder. And this is one inch bar stock. So, eh, like I said before. Actually, one thing you always want to check before you weld is check your tip. Um, I got a lot of slag on this. So we want to clean that out to make sure that the gas has a way to come out. All right, let's make some sparks. Beautiful, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. You're going to have to see this. Hold on, hold on. We got to see this one. Look how beautiful that is. Yeah, and I'm an amateur. All right, so what I'm gonna do is actually take a hammer and kind of beat these two sides together and I'll keep my weld going all the way across. Be right back. All right. So now I have space to actually weld all the way around. I uh, just use a ball ping hammer and just kind of flatten it a little bit. Uh, ball ping works great. All right, let's get this welded in. Not too bad for an amateur. To the other side. Well, it's not quite dimes, but uh, not bad. Actually, I got one hole there that water can get in there. I'm gonna fill that in, but this guy should be ready to go for the next step. Square. Make my square. Yes. All right. So basically, this right here is not cut straight. So what I'm gonna do is use my quick square and actually try figure out where it's high and where it's low. I've already hit with the grinder once, but looks like I need to do it a little bit more right there. All right, that's a lot better. Um, I did just bubble that edge so that when I put it on here, I'll be able to weld it. Wow, that's hot. <laughs> weld it pretty good. Uh, so I'm gonna go grab a bullet level and see what we can do with this all right i got two little bullet levels here i'm gonna have one making sure that this guy is level and then i'll put another one here and make sure she's level so that level and level makes goodness So I kind of went over a couple of times, uh, only because I have such a small welder and this is such a thick piece of steel. Uh, so I think everything is pretty good right here. Uh, I'm going to put a little gusset right here just to make sure that it is not going to fall off. But she is up there. She is not coming off. All right, we're almost done with the actual basic uh, design of it. The only thing we have left is to cut our braces. Now I'm using this right here. It's pretty strong. It's a C channel so that we can stick it right underneath these mounts and then weld it directly to that one inch bar. So we're just gonna take a measurement, cut this, grind it, weld it, then we're done. 
Well, wow. we're going to paint it. All right, so we're going to do two things about nine inches. We're going to come over here and use my new toy. Come. All right, we got the new toy. Got everything lined up. Don't forget your safety glasses. And there you go. Simple as that. Hardly any slag. Just butter. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, glasses on. <laughs> I love that tool. It's one of my new favorites. All right, everything has been put together. Um, I went ahead and welded on the two tabs that I that I cut out with the saw. And right before I paint it, I wanted to test fit it. And this is what we got. Take a look. So basically, you just have the regular receiver hitch that goes out to the the one and three quarter DOM. Goes through the one inch steel. Uh, solid bar stock and those are the two brackets that I cut off there. and then I just connected up the the rack so now it sits off the back now ideally if I was going to do this again I would have brought it a little bit closer to the truck but since I didn't do that I get to open up my tailgate a little bit not all the way but at least a little bit so anyway, uh, let's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this off. We're going to get it painted. And then once we get it painted, we will show you what it looks like. All right, let's go. All right, she's all painted. Take a look at that. Oh, yeah, nice and shiny. So, yes, I did paint it black. That's what I got. So, hopefully that is not going to rust. The paint that I use is actually a, uh, an enamel. So hopefully it will last a little bit. Uh, once it dries, I'll take it down. I'll go ahead and put the bike thing back on it. And then hopefully take it to Harris Lake if they ever open. A, pee, a squirrel can pee on the trail and they'll close it. But anyway, that's what we're going to do. All right, it's finished. It has been painted. It has been mounted. A bike is on it. And I am ready to get out on the trails. As you can tell, it is a beautiful day. The bad thing is, is that it rained last night. So if it rains last night, that means the trails are closed again. But I will be available and ready for the next time I go out. So let's take a look at this thing as a finished product. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do a recap of exactly what we did here just in case you missed it in case you fast forwarded like you're not supposed to but it's okay as long as you subscribe and like it hey hit the bell have fun with it anyway so we started with a regular receiver uh, it's just one of the ones I had left over I pulled the ball off I went ahead and welded a one and one set uh, let's say 1.75 120 wall DOM tubing that was a bend that I did on another project that mm, Let's just say it wasn't quite right. So I put it in the scrap pile, but we're going to use it again. It is also connected to a one inch bar stock that is actually welded on to that. I uh, actually ground down as you saw in the video um, and then welded that around, hit it with a hammer uh, to make it flat and put on that really, really well. So then uh, the other parts were parts left over from an old HP network rack which was actually worked out pretty well. Um, I might take those off and redo them later. Um, there was one part of it that I didn't really like, um, but yeah, I might take that off. And not only that, if I do make them a little bit longer, I probably could put two of these up here. I do have two of these bike racks, and so I can bring my uh, wife along. It'd be great. So we already had the Thole uh, bike rack set up for when I had my Beamer. Don't have the Beamer anymore, so now we use it for this. So anyway, like, subscribe, and we'll see you later.